Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Hopefully y'all are having a great fall so far and that you get to spend some time with your family and your friends this weekend. We really appreciate each and every one of you that's followed us and watched our videos here at The Hunting Public. We could not be doing what we do without you guys. So we appreciate all of you. And before we get into today's video, Hayden wanted me to mention a few things for you about our Black Friday sales on the website. Everything's on sale right now. It's our biggest sale of the year. You can all save an additional 10% on your order by using any one of the guys' names in the code box. So just put in Warb and you'll save 10% or Ted or Jake or Zach or Greg, anybody's name you can enter and it'll save you a little bit of money. The best way to support our channel is through our merchandise and through our website. So head on over there and pick up some THP swag for the holidays. But thanks again, guys. Appreciate all of you. Now let's get to today's video. Heading to Missouri. I'm gonna meet Hayden down there. He is hunting right now. Got the car packed up. No idea where I'm gonna be after Missouri. That's gonna be probably the last time I'm gonna hunt there. I got a tag. Hayden's got a tag. It's gonna be warm this week, but it's the last week before rifle season, which starts Saturday. Today's Monday, so good four days to hunt. It's gonna be in the 70s and maybe even 81 on Wednesday, it's looking like. So Ooh. we're gonna hunt through it. It's the best week, so. Well, I won't say it's the best week, but. But. It's a good week, nonetheless. Got to make the most of that second tag. Go get her done. Still shaking, jeez. Memphis sit started off really slow and then saw that doe out in the middle of the CRP. Then about a half hour later, saw that first really big buck. Looked like he was gonna come right down this edge towards me, but I think he caught scent of that doe that came through first and then followed her trail. And then right at last light, another buck, even bigger than the first one, came through that same gap that the doe and the first buck went through. They were coming towards me, it was a doe and a buck. At one point he almost mounted her to breed her. Eventually they hung up at just over 40 yards. I don't know if my wind swirled or they caught me moving. They hung up there till camera light faded and then just continued on down this ridge. Keith should be rolling in the next couple hours here, so I'm gonna wait a little bit longer and pull this stuff out of the tree and head back to the truck and come up with the game plan. Camp, huh? I guess it. This is camp. Nice. Welcome to it. Got a spot to ourselves, huh? Spot to ourselves. And you saw some big ones, huh? I saw a couple of big ones. That's I almost good shot news. one of them. Yeah, that's pretty cool news. Yeah. Like you said. I got pretty good footage of the first one and the second one. Like, you can see it. You can tell yeah. it's big. I mean, it's 40 oh, yards man. away at that point. So we're going to be we're gonna be in there with them tomorrow. Are these the first deer you saw? Oh, uh, I saw a doe before him. Smaller one. No. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> kind of freaky. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so the doe that came through first went through that lane that way. She came from over here. Mm -hmm. And then the next buck I saw also came through that little gap, but he came from the other way and started coming right towards me. And at this point, I'm starting to freak out a little bit, <laughs> thinking it's gonna happen. And she turns mm -hmm. and starts coming right to me. And I'm like, here oh we go. Gosh. And then he catches a little bit of my wind, I think. It swirled on me. It was perfect all evening for that one moment. But not like enough where it really buggered him, but he just, one of this that sixth sense they have. Yeah. And he just stood there for five minutes, probably. Oh, man. Just stood there. Oh, it's torture. <laughs> and then he didn't like, I mean, he didn't spook, but he once he got here, he kind of, trotted off a little bit and his Towards doe was doe the doe was down here so he kind of left the doe a little bit is that a spot we should like be at in the morning or something uh i'll, sh I'll show you what i'm thinking mm -hmm. after this 
All right, it's November 8th. I was down this drainage last night. I've had my eyes on this place since I've been hunting here earlier in the season. There's not a lot of trees you can get in. It's got a lot of thick cover. And we're just gonna take it real slow and pick this ridge apart. We're gonna stand here for a while. We can see down into this drainage a little bit and a little bit onto this top where this CRP is. We're planning to be in here all day if we have to. So a little warm, but they're still out there doing stuff. Hayden and I waited for the day winds to get consistent and began hunting toward where the bucks came out of the night before. We were running into hot sign and we bumped a few does around on the outskirts of the main bedding thicket. We called on our way in and made multiple setups before pushing all the way in. While we were patiently moving, we had multiple groups of hunters close in on the same bedding area, one of which walked the ridge top directly upwind of the suspected bedding, prompting us to get aggressive and push the rest of the way in. And sure enough, we find multiple sets of beds and green rubs from the night before but it was evident that the deer were not using the same bedding area the way they were the previous evening. After running into more hunters, and with an 80 degree day in the forecast, we opted to get some more work done the following day and relocated to another piece of public that we were both interested in, where we felt we could escape the heavier loads of hunting pressure and move into the next cold front with some fresh optimism. All right, so Keith and I, we got some work done during the middle of the day and decided to just pull camp and, and head to a different area. We still hunted through that bedding area yesterday and then ended up that there was a number of people hunting in there. And we just pulled into the new spot we're gonna be hunting. We got about 30 minutes left of light, so we're just driving around trying to get a feel of the land, hopefully get eyes on some deer, mainly track what roads where we can drive. Uh, and so far it looks like this. there's a lot less pressure here than where we were at. So hopes are high right now. We're gonna go out and see if we can learn something and be after him in the morning. Feeling good about it. Definitely great habitat. Completely different than where we were just at. A whole change of scenery never hurts for a, for a rut hunt, you know? Certainly not. Switch it up. If something ain't working, then There's danger. There's deer right there. Oh, dope. Big doe. Yeah, oh, there's a buck. Oh, big buck. buck. I'm assuming he's gonna be right on that same trail that doe. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Two-year-old, but I'd probably shoot that one. Oh, dang. Go ahead and pin that. Drop a pin on that, then. <laughs> well, okay. Feeling and pretty decent. He seemed to be feeling a little frisky too, kind running chasing that around. around. Okay. 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 And it's 85 degrees. All right, it is November 10th, Keith and I's first morning in this new area. Last night we got here in time to drive around for the evening, saw a couple deer, one small buck chasing a doe, a uh, handful of other does. This morning we decided to do a similar thing, just drive around, see where people are hunting, see if we can find some deer, but uh, we just laid eyes on our first deer. We saw a fawn running away and then there was a small buck on her trail, so. I think we're gonna drive around for the next 30 minutes or so more, just trying to just narrow down where we're gonna go into first, start looking for sign and maybe run into some deer. It's gonna get really hot today. It's gonna be upper 70s, but tomorrow the cold front rolls through. A huge change over what it's been the last couple days. So big goal for today is to learn as much as we can so that we're in a good position tomorrow. Keith and I are basically just easing down this dike real slow. I'm just glassing on both sides, trying to catch something moving and just checking buck sign. Been running into a lot of rubs and scrapes. One little part that had some hunter sign, but got the wind in her face. Here to the right, we've got a pretty sizable river. This time of year, bucks like to push does right up against the river when they're locked down with them just to keep them isolated from other deer. So haven't seen any deer yet while we've been walking, but some promising signs. So we're gonna keep easing down in here and hopefully run into one. Bigger buck. I think it was a bigger buck.
We make a play on the deer we saw and come up with nothing, and the warming temps quickly shut down the deer movement for the day. We make use of the warm conditions and push around to deeper areas in the river bottom, to spots we found the highest diversity in while map scouting. By the afternoon, we settle into a setup where we pushed in to find the highest concentration of red-hot sign that we had seen yet. But with the warm evening, we have nothing to show but a deer blowing downwind at last light. But with the sign we found, we have high hopes for the weather change in the morning. Feeling like we're set up to be in a decent position. I think so. Well, Keith and I are back at camp, cooking up some backstrap, vegetables, and some mashed potatoes. I think we found the spot we need to be in the morning. It's uh, the highest concentration of buck sign I think either Keith or I have ever seen. And especially in that specific area, we hadn't run into much buck sign, and then all of a sudden we just hit this pocket where it was just tore up. Lots of fresh sign too. And at the end of light, we ended up hearing a buck, what we assumed is a buck, blowing probably 150 yards away from us. Uh, it didn't seem like it was spooked too bad. Either way, with the amount of buck sign in there, has gotta be numerous bucks. So. I think I speak for both of us when I say we're feeling pretty confident about tomorrow. We got this cold front rolling through. Got a really good spot to start at least. Probably sit in that location till about midday and then maybe just start still hunting our way in further. Keith and I are both going to bring our bows. We both got tags. Uh, we're hoping we get a couple opportunities at them, but I think we'd settle for one, hoping for two. right past your head anyway the yeah, I, know, I, can tell. I saw him from far away and I was like I don't know if you're gonna shoot him but pretty oh, much right away I was like I'll shoot the heck out of him he was right on the edge I could have drilled him pretty easily from my position that just was kind of unfortunate the way he came in yeah came in a little too fast on that last couple seconds yeah. there and I didn't have a stupid I mean I wasn't ready I didn't have arrow on because I was just like I'm filming. I didn't really know what my position would have been too much here to like actually be able to get yeah past you there too much. Oh well that was kinda cool. Yeah I mean he wasn't huge but decent. Yeah I mean he's had there's gotta be a bigger one in here than that. It's like the only way I can get drawn from like being right here because he's literally a eight yards like the last time I saw him I was just like if I could pull this off to draw 
before he sees and just like, whoa, yeah, maybe could have done it, but oh well. Just get back into position. Oh, more come in. Cool. 709. Good. Once he started getting closer and closer and closer, I was like, touch. <laughs> so I always like, I saw him and I was about to ask you, but then I was just like, I don't know, I'll probably try to get you to shoot him if you want. But you said you weren't, and I was just like, oh well, that's fine. Keep it tight, that was fine. It's a little afternoon. Saw that one buck this morning that came to 12 yards and scrambled to switch cameraman and shooter and ended up getting caught on the draws. But cool encounter. We haven't seen anything since then, so we're gonna work a little bit deeper into this block of timber and see if we can get eyes on something or find some more areas like this. It doesn't seem like they're in this exact spot today, so we're gonna go try to find them. Worth dropping. Keith and I have been still hunting this timber for the last two and a half hours. Scattered sign here and there. And we had this place on the map in mind the whole time we were doing it of working this way in the end. A lot of this timber is really monotonous, but when you, once you get to this edge, there's a lot more diversity and it gets a lot more, there's a lot more thicker cover. We worked up this edge for a little bit and didn't see much fresh sign. I was thinking, probably start heading back to where we were this morning. And Keith spotted movement up ahead about 100 yards. Sure enough, it was a really big buck, and he had a younger satellite buck with him as well. Watched him chase that satellite buck off and go back into that thick cover, assuming that he has a doe in there somewhere. The satellite buck looped around downwind of us, and he ended up just lightly spooking off the opposite direction. I think we're going to try to get a little bit closer to the edge of that cover, because it seems like he wants to hang pretty tight to that, so we're probably going to arm crawl up to this next big tree. There's a little bit of deadfall in front of it and get set up. I don't think he's going far. It's a good situation to be in. Within the bubble right now. Like, he just chased that young buck off. Yeah, I feel like if we grunt, they're gonna break leaves. I'll make get him to 30 yards, do you think? Yeah, we're gonna have to break leaves to get like that cleared out. Keep crawling into those ones first.
Well, Keith and I crawled within 50 or 60 yards of where we last saw that buck. Uh, tried a couple calling sequences, threw everything we had at him, and didn't end up seeing him again. Not sure if he just stayed holed up in that thick cover or potentially may have pushed that doe across that slough. On the way out, we did end up seeing another really big buck that could have been the same buck on the other side of the slough. We didn't think we could get any closer to where he was set up because we were in really open woods and where we last saw him was really thick. You couldn't see more than three yards in there. So if we tried to get any closer without knowing exactly where he was at, we probably would have just blown him out and it would have been really tough to get a shot through all that stuff. Rifle season comes in tomorrow here in Missouri. So Keith's heading back to Iowa to film Warb and I'm gonna be heading back to Wisconsin to get some work done to prep for holiday sales. If you wanna pick up some merchandise, you can go over to thehuntingpublic.com. Everything on our store is for sale. It'll be our biggest sale of the year and you can save an additional 10% if you use any of the guys' codes. At the end of the day, Keith and I had a lot of fun. We learned a lot, had some really cool encounters. Overall, it was a pretty successful trip. We didn't have a lot of time, but we still were able to get on bucks. Just couldn't close the deal. So we're gonna get driving. We'll see you on the next one.